I have sensed that the Holy Spirit is leading me to revisit something that we've looked at and talked about over the last few years. And this is due in part really to the almost surreal events of this last week, which were brought to a zenith of sorts with the 2012 Olympics opening uh, ceremony. Um, call me silly, but that looks an awful lot like a flying saucer and UFO to me. But that's just the beginning of it, by the way. Uh, actually, I'm ill prepared to go into too much detail about it because, I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm still processing the enormity and the intensity of all of the satanic symbolism throughout the entire ceremony. Uh, you know, I came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and came out of being demon-possessed through the medium of satanic music. And I can tell you that symbolism in Satanism is huge. And I think we see it here with this Olympic ceremony. Uh, I am just going to take a moment and mention that the whole ceremony looked eerily like the symbolic birth of a satanic savior of sorts. Uh, pictured here is this very large baby in the midst of the, uh, you know, uh, Colosseum. Here's another uh, photo of it from a different angle. What this has to do with the Olympics, I have no idea. Uh, but there might be a message here. Uh, it was really interesting because the uh, commentator on the news uh, said uh, the following when the baby was unveiled. Said, um, oh, look at the baby. I don't know if that's cute or creepy. <laughs> I would opt for the latter. Very strange, very weird, and if you didn't know any better, you'd think that the scene with the farm animals was meant to sort of replicate and, and imitate the shepherd's fields and even the manger scene when uh, the Savior was born. You, know, you have to understand that Satan is a master counterfeiter. and. The counterfeit from Satan actually authenticates the genuine. And what I mean by that is, is that you don't counterfeit a $4 bill. Why? Because there's no such thing as a genuine $4 bill. So the fact that there's this counterfeit symbolism to me uh, says something. And I think there's a message here. Uh, not only was the ceremony riddled with dark and demonic ritual, uh, it seemed to me that it was to mark the the arrival of something and or someone onto the world stage. I mean, it was just, I mean, so full of all of these symbols and meanings and very dark. I don't know for those of you who were able to watch it. I didn't watch all of it, but I watched enough of it to realize that uh, there's more here than meets the eye. Let me hasten to say that for us as believers, discernment is a must especially with everything that's out there. I mean, there's a lot of information on the internet, and we have to be, I think, discerning. You know, God has given us discernment with the ability to discern the spirits and know because we know the Word of God, we know the genuine, which, by the way, is how they train bank tellers. They get them familiar with the genuine currency so that they can spot a counterfeit. They count it, they smell it, they touch it, they feel it, they look at it, they stack it, and then when a counterfeit is inserted, they can discern it. Why? Because they're so familiar with the genuine. And so too is this true with us. 
us as it relates to the Word of God. If we know the Word of God, we can spot these things, we can discern these things. Well, be that as it may, and perhaps with that discussion better suited for another day, I think the Lord would have me to talk about what's happening in real time today in the world. It is just the likes of which I've never seen before. I know I'm in good company with many others who have been students of Bible prophecy, and this is just un imaginable. I mean, there's such a heightened expectation of something that is coming. And I think the Olympic ceremony sort of confirmed that in a way. Now, that said, I think I'd be remiss were I not to mention how that this particular prophecy is one for which I talk of with a broken and grieving heart. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. What I'm speaking of is the United States of America uh, related to Bible prophecy and how it is that this once most powerful nation on earth isn't even mentioned in the pages of Scripture prophetically in the last days. It's for this reason that many prophecy teachers have concluded that something must happen to the United States in order for her to be absent from the end times prophetic program. And so the question becomes, what is that something going to be? And in an attempt to answer this, of course, speculation abounds because nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. We just know that something is going to happen. We just don't know what that something is. Now, whenever it comes to this topic of the United States of America's conspicuous absence from Bible prophecy, I'm personally prone to wax sentimental. And what I mean by that is that my mother and father immigrated to America from the Middle East with their nine-month-old son in tow and $20 in their pocket. This is back in the early 60s. And while both my parents are now deceased, I did come to find out towards their latter years that the main reason they had fled the Middle East was to escape the Islamic oppression that existed even then. I share that to say this. Had my parents not come to this great country, that nine-month-old son, who, by the way, is 50 years old now. <laughs> and uh, I may not even be alive. And not only am I grateful for my life here in the United States, I'm eternally grateful for my eternal life in heaven with my Savior because of it. And really, this, this is why I approach the prophecies concerning America with a tenderness, a careful and prayerful gentleness, if you will. You know, sadly, I have to confess that that hasn't always been the case in the past. I have had sort of a cavalier and even callous approach to the United States in terms of her absence from Bible prophecy, but the fact of the matter is, is that I'm here today because my parents came to America 50 years ago. Well, in all my years of studying Bible prophecy, I've always held on to the hope that the rapture of the church would explain the absence of the U.S. And that may still be true, but it is starting to look a little bit like the U.S. may suffer more first, especially given the geopolitical predicament that we now find ourselves in. Uh, allow me to briefly list what I'll call the 10 attributes of what I believe are and contribute to and explain why the U.S. is not mentioned in Bible prophecy. They're as follows. Number one, the elimination of private property and application of all rents of land to public purpose. 
Number two, a heavy progressive or graduated income tax. Number three, the elimination of all rights of inheritance. Four, the confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels. Number five, the centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. This, I believe, was uh, likely the bank bailouts of uh, recent years. Number six, the centralization of means of communication, maybe the internet, and transportation, the auto industry, in the hands of the state. Number seven, the extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state. Number eight, the equal obligation of all to work and the establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. Number nine, the gradual elimination of distinction between town and country by a more equable distribu distribution of the population. And number 10, the free education for all children in government schools. Okay, why did I just read that list for you? Well, it is from 1848 and it's the communist manifesto of Karl Marx to bring a socialist dictatorship by means of this political aim. And it comes packaged with this centralization, this nationalization, and even this globalization. And I believe it will give way to the new world order under the control of the Antichrist. I want to take it a step further and submit that from the seriousness of Syria and the situation in Syria is serious to the peril in America and with everything in between, what we are witnessing is this coming together to form the perfect prophetic storm. Now, if it sounds like I believe there's a common thread in everything that's happening, that's because I believe there's a common thread in everything that's happening. I'm certainly not trying to be cute or clever. It's just that I say that because I find myself hard-pressed to sign off on everything that's happening as being merely coincidental. Keep in mind that the book of Revelation tells us how that Satan knoweth he hath but a short time. In other words, he knows that he's running out of time. And to me, this explains why it's getting really weird. I mean, really weird and really fast. Is it just me? <laughs> Or is this mass murder in Aurora, Colorado getting stranger by the minute? Now don't start labeling me this, you know, conspiracy guy. Um, and, and by the way, do you realize that just by me mentioning the Aurora, Colorado massacre, doesn't that now seem like old news? Doesn't that seem like it happened like, that was a long time ago or a while ago, right? It was 10 days ago. To me, this demonstrates the swiftness with which everything that's happening is happening. And if you can imagine, it's going to get worse. It's going to wax more evil seemingly by the day. And this is why the scriptures are replete, not only with warnings about Satan knowing he has but a short time, but also that Jesus could come at any time which is why Satan knows he has but a short time. By the way, it was only one year ago last Sunday that a demon-possessed man went on a rampage in Norway murdering a total of 77 people. The New York Times, that bastion of, you know, balanced news reporting, <laughs> called him a, quote, gun-loving, highly religious, right-wing fundamentalist Christian obsessed with the threat of Muslim immigration. Now, fast forward to the present, 
And we have another demon-possessed man who goes on a rampage and massacres 12 people right here in the United States of America. I suppose it shouldn't come as any surprise when this last Wednesday, the Times of India publishes an article that the Norway massacre man had inspired the Colorado killer, saying, quote, he followed the teachings of the Norwegian mass killer as he planned his murder spree. All right, what does all of this have to do with the U.S. and Bible prophecy? Consider this. It may not be so much about what has happened as it is about what may happen and perhaps more importantly, where it may all lead. Now let me explain. This could very well lead to the fourth political aim of the Marxism Manifesto, which is the confiscation of property from Christian rebels, quote unquote. I'm keenly aware that there will be those who might argue that we're in the United States of America. This isn't going to happen in the good old U.S. of A. I would just respectfully, for those who may be in that camp, recommend to you a very powerful DVD documentary titled Agenda. It's by Curtis Bowers. You can get it on Amazon. It's subtitled, Grinding America Down. This video is not for the faint at heart. And I have to warn you that it will just, it'll blow your mind. It'll open your eyes. It'll be very shocking and even disturbing to you. In it, Curtis Bowers does a masterful job of documenting from his research how the Marxist agenda brings about the collapse of America from within. This has been a movement afoot for the last about 100 years, actually. Now, this is why I said what I said about coming to this country, being grateful for this country, because I know that I could be categorized as, you know, not one who loves this country, and nothing could be further for the, for the truth, especially when I say what I'm about to say. And that is that I believe it's necessary that something like this happens within America by virtue of it being the catalyst to that which happens to America. Now hear me out. The question becomes, what is it that happens? I'm still hanging on to the hope that it's the rapture that happens and that is what guts out this great nation. But this then begs the question of what if it's not? What if it's not the rapture? If the rapture gutting out America is not what explains the absence of America, then what is? I want to attempt to answer that question, but first I need to take you back to this Jerusalem Post quote from Obama's address in Cairo, Egypt of all places. This is three years ago, back on June 4th of 2009. Listen to what he said, quote, we have the power to make the world we seek, but only if we have the courage to make a new beginning, keeping in mind what has been written. The Holy Quran tells us, O oh mankind, we have created you male and female, and we have made you into nations and tribes so that you may know one another. The Talmud tells us, the whole of the Torah is for the purpose of promoting peace. The Holy Bible tells us, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. The people of the world can live together in peace. We know that is God's vision. Now, that must be our work here on earth. Thank you, and may God's peace be upon you. Which is an Arabic saying, Salam Alaikum, the peace of God be upon you. 
I believe the President of the United States in this Cairo address from three years ago may have at least in part answered the question of what happens to America. Could it be that the reason the United States of America isn't in Bible prophecy is because we've denied God and we've denied the Word of God? Listen to this quote from Mark Hitchcock's book, The Late Great United States. I think Mark hits the proverbial nail on the head. He says, the future of America that we can deduce from Scripture is exactly what we see beginning to materialize before our eyes in today's headlines. America is encountering serious problems at home and abroad. We're oppressed by a sense of some impending crisis. When the trumpet sounds and all the believers in the United States vanish, America's final days will be like so many pages dangling from a December calendar. Like the great powers before it, the United States will collapse under the weight of its own sin, self-indulgence, and excess. The scriptural silence concerning America in the end times after the rapture indicates that America will fall from its position of world prominence. The United States will suffer its decline and its fall at the rapture of the church, probably in combination with a series of other harsh setbacks. Well said. I would suggest that this series of other harsh setbacks is already happening. And it's leading to the inevitable demise of the United States of America. Bear with me. I want to quickly go through a number of recent events that are taxing what I believe is an unspeakable toll on this once great country. First, we're still in the wake of an unprecedented heat wave causing one of the worst, if not the worst, droughts in the history of the United States of America. Why is that significant? Well, in the Bible, God uses drought as judgment. It's the judgment of God to bring drought and famine upon the land. I still believe that another thing that's responsible for our demise is our treatment of Israel. I mean, wouldn't you agree that it's suspect at best? I mean, I believe that America has all but turned her back on Israel as God's chosen people. This was an interesting uh, video. Uh, you might want to, if you haven't seen it, you might want to search it on YouTube. Enter Carney Capital Israel. Uh, I have to tell you though, it's, it's really uncomfortable to watch his nervous laughter when asked repeatedly about the position of this administration on the capital of Israel. Unable, the headline in the Weekly Standard said, but I don't think unable, I think unwilling to identify the capital of Israel. He would not say whether President Obama believes it's Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. And for nearly a minute, and that's where it gets really uncomfortable even watching it with his nervous laughter in response to the repeated questioning Carney only says that our position hasn't changed. And he also says, I haven't got that question in a while, and he keeps dodging it. Unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Well, interesting. In concert with that, even the BBC Olympics website is unwilling to acknowledge Jerusalem as Israel's capital, saying only that it's their, quote, seat of government, further stating though most foreign embassies are in Tel Aviv. Interesting, to add insult to injury, they even list East Jerusalem as the intended seat of government of Palestine. 
You know, um, they actually, they pulled it. There, I don't have any documentation of it, but uh, there is the thought that prior to the outcry over this, they actually listed under Palestine on Palestine's page on their Olympics website, East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. And when you go to these pages of these different nations like Libya and, and Egypt and all of these nations that have had anything but peace, you find these peaceful backdrops and photographs and, you know, settings. And then when you go to Israel's page, you got an Israeli soldier with his weapon confronting a Palestinian. And we expected them to even so much as acknowledge the 40-year anniversary of 11 Israeli athletes who were murdered by the demon-possessed Yasser Arafat and his Islamic terrorists during the 1972 Munich Olympics? Really? Listen, the Bible tells us that this is what's going to happen. This should not come as a surprise. Every nation, the United States included, will be against Israel. Israel will have no one except for God to turn to. By God's design, by the way. I'm almost done. <laughs> as hard as it is to wrap your mind around that. How about this Ram Emmanuel? A Jew himself. Now it seems he's very chummy with the nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. Last Friday, July 27th, JTA, a global news service of the Jewish people, ran this headline Louis Farrakhan and Jewish mayors. And they reported that, quote, Chicago Mayor Ron Emanuel said this week he welcomes the help of Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan in stopping the surge of violence in Chicago neighborhoods. Wow. You know what's happening in Chicago? Talk about the demise of the United States of America. You know that you can buy a house if you're planning on relocating to a less expensive area like Chicago? You can buy a house for one dollar. I wouldn't recommend it. There's a reason it's only one dollar. The gangs have taken over entire towns and cities. The murder rate is off the charts. And the mayor Rahm Emanuel, formerly with this administration, is calling upon the nation of Islam leader for help? No wonder. God forbid we call on our God for help. If that weren't bad enough, Rahm Emanuel totally snubs Chick-fil-A. Why? You hear about this? Because, God forbid, they take a stand for the biblical definition of marriage. This Examiner news story, I think, caught it best and said it best. Rahm Emanuel, Christian Chick-fil-A, bad. Anti-Semitic nation of Islam, good. <laughs> Does that bring to mind a prophecy about how in the last days they'll call good evil and evil good? There it is. Let me close this way. Some of you are saying, please close. <laughs> I want to encourage you, if this is causing you to get a little fearful right now, and I'll tell you why, you don't need to be. God's not giving you a spirit of fear. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're the bride of Christ. And the Lord will take care of His bride. Even if the rapture does not precede the collapse of the United States. And even if the rapture does not cause the collapse of the United States. He will take care of us 
until the trumpet sounds. You've heard it said that when we don't know what our future holds, we can know who holds our future, especially during these dark and perilous and evil days in which we live. One last thought. Every week, I go through this whole process in preparation for the prophecy update. And in my heart and on my mind, I have this one thought that never leaves me. Here it is. What if this prophecy update is the last prophecy update? Now think about this. There is coming a prophecy update. And one of these prophecy updates is going to be the last prophecy update. I know that's profound, but... <laughs> what if today is the last one? Are you ready? I hope you are. If you're not or you're not sure, you can be sure. John says you can know that you have eternal life. If you're fearful and not ready for the Lord, it's an indication that you're not right with the Lord. And I would really encourage you before you leave today, and we'll give you the opportunity to as well, to do something about that if that's you here today. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we're maybe a little stunned and maybe in a sanctified way, in a good way, we need to be stunned. Maybe this is a wake up from our spiritual slumber. Lord, I pray that you'll take these ominous things that we've seen here today and do what you would desire to do in our lives as a result of it. Lord, we don't want to get in your way or hinder you from that which you would desire to do. So, Lord, as the hymn of old says, have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. You are the potter. We are the clay. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.